Late in the evening of the 13th of June, 1886, King Ludwig II of Bavaria was found floating dead in a lake. Both the bodies of him and his physician were found floating in Lake Starnberg. It was immediately presumed that they had drowned, but upon doing an autopsy, no water was found in their lungs. Ludwig was also a very strong swimmer, so the fact that he had apparently drowned by suicide, as it was ruled, seemed very unlikely indeed. And on top of this, the water was only waist deep, so how on earth did he and his physician die? But who was Ludwig and what was his life like? Ludwig was born in 1845. Here we can see him on the far left with his family. He was the eldest son of Maximilian II of Bavaria and his wife Marie of Prussia. Ludwig had a very strictly controlled childhood with a very strict education. The importance of his position as the crown prince was emphasised from a very young age and I think this came to impact him in later years. During his youth, Ludwig formed a very strong and long-lasting friendship with his cousin Elizabeth of Bavaria who later became Empress Sissi of Austria. Ludwig's father died when he was 18 years old and so he ascended the throne, but he was not ready for such a high office. But he was considered very good looking, youthful and hopeful and so he was very popular, at least initially, in Bavaria. Ludwig really wasn't that much interested in state politics. His passion lay in the arts. He loved music, architecture, paintings and the theatre. He was also a very introverted character and shunned public appearances, which was a problem for the king. Ludwig just wanted to escape. He was a daydreamer. He was considered to be a fairy tale king. He didn't want to be living in the real world. And I think this is why he built and created such amazing palaces. His most favourite castle of all is Neuschwanstein Castle, located on the top of these amazing mountains. Ludwig wanted to create the ultimate fairy tale palace to which he could escape and he used his own funds to build it rather than public money but he had to borrow heavily to do so. I've been to this castle and indeed it is very impressive, the location particularly, but it was actually never completed. He died before he got the chance to finish it. Ludwig was also a great fan of Louis XIV, the Sun King, so much so that he basically built his own version of Versailles, seen here. This is Schloss Heron Kimsey and it is really phenomenal. I've also been here. It's located on this amazing island and again, it's a fairy tale castle. It has an almost exact replica of the Hall of Mirrors from Versailles and I think this really brings across how Ludwig just wanted to escape. He wanted to escape into a different era, into a different country. He also built Linderhof Palace, which is in southwest Bavaria, and this is the only castle slash palace that he actually completed during his lifetime. And interestingly, when it came to the interiors, rather than actually discuss the interior decoration with architects, Ludwig rather talked to um, stage set designers who usually created sets for theatre. And again, I think this really is a window into his soul because we know what he was thinking. He wanted to escape reality. Anyway, as you can imagine, all of this lavish spending, this lack of dedication to his role as king, soon got people quite angry. He was also so uninterested in politics that he became a puppet to the political ambitions of the new German emperor. He entered into wars that were not beneficial or in the best interest for Bavaria, and so very soon his popularity began to wane. On top of this, he hadn't yet married. He wasn't even interested in marriage. However, in 1867, he eventually entered into an engagement with his cousin, Duchess Sophie of Bavaria, who was the younger sister of Empress Sissi. However, although loads of sighs of relief were held throughout the realm, he kept putting off the wedding, and in fact, it never took place. He eventually called off the engagement. And so there's lots of speculation that he was probably a homosexual and indeed he'd had lots of very close male friends throughout his life. But of course, as a king of Bavaria and it being in the 19th century, this just wasn't to be. By 1885, Ludwig's popularity had taken a great dive. He was unhappy personally. He was also running up astronomical personal debts to the tune of 14 million marks. 
And yet, despite being advised to cut back on his great expenditure, he carried on without pause. And of course, because of this, many of his ministers started to label him as being a mad king and mentally unstable. And then he was deposed, he was declared unfit to rule because of his insanity, and he was confined to the castle, or Berg Castle, on the shores of Lake Starnberg. So this was to be his new prison, but it was the very next day that he was found dead in the lake down below. And so after dinner on the following day that he just arrived, he and his physician went for a walk around the grounds. They decided to take a stroll along the shore of the Lake Starnberg. Both men were last seen at 6pm that evening and then it started to rain and that was the last anyone saw of them. No sign of Ludwig or his physician were found until 10.30pm that same evening and then he was found dead floating in the lake. This is him lying on his deathbed. So as I mentioned his death was declared a suicide by drowning. But, as I mentioned, this seemed very unlikely indeed. He also hadn't expressed any suicidal thoughts. And even if Ludwig was like, yeah, I want to die, well, what about his physician? He had no suicidal thoughts. They were both ready for their new life. And this is why there's lots of speculation about the fact that maybe they were murdered. Maybe Ludwig was murdered to prevent him gaining the throne again and causing havoc. And there seems to be lots of other suspicious activity surrounding his discovery and the fact that he was dead. There's some rumours that there was a gunshot in his head. There are other rumours that um, the fishermen who discovered him were sworn to secrecy. And so all of this just doesn't really add up. But what do you think? Like, what happened to Ludwig? Do you think he was murdered to prevent him from regaining the throne? Or do you think he was just so distraught at having lost the throne that he wished to die? One of his most famous quotes is, I wish to remain an eternal enigma to myself and to others. Well, at the very least, we can say that he achieved that.